Hey, welcome back to Mastering EDM with Logic Pro, and this is the second video in the series introducing mixing, and today we're gonna to be covering volume and pan. Volume is rather self-explanatory. You know that uh, louder volume means louder sound. Okay, that was kind of a uh, redundant statement there. But anyway, you know what volume is. I'm sure you do. And uh, I'll talk about why that's important in a minute here. And um, the second thing I was gonna talk about was pan. And pan is like volume for the left and right. So I'll show, I got this bass line here. I'm gonna cycle it and um, show you what it sounds like when I pan something. Okay, so that's pan, pretty simple. Left and right, left and right. And um, now that's useful for a couple things, but I wanna start with volume first because volume's more important. Volume is all about getting the balance in your track. And um, you, you may think the balance would be left and right. Yes, that's because we normally balance left and right, not forwards and backwards. But in the sense of music, most of your balance is gonna be down the center. People tend to think that in music, it's still going to be left and right because, okay, I have a, a hi-hat on the right, so I need to put a, a bright synthesizer on the left to balance it out. That's true, but that's less important than balance down the center. And I'll show you what that is right here. So I have, um, uh, I have over here, let me just start with the beginning. So I have this, this track. Okay, so you get what's generally going on here. Got a bass line, got a kick drum, and I have this weird uh, thing. Yeah, the effect. Now, I'm gonna pull this up. Now, it doesn't sound bad, but there's not a balance anymore because the bass line is supposed to be a focus. But since I pulled this up, it's not loud enough to where it drowns out the bass line because it's so thin the way I've EQ'd it. Actually, I didn't EQ it here, but I did EQ it in ES2 music filters. But um, anyway, uh, it's, it's not that so loud that it overpowers anything in the sense of drowning something out, but it overpowers the bass line in the sense of taking the focus from the bass line and now putting on this effect. So the loudest thing you hear in a sense of what's closest, what's more in front, is this, not the bass line. So I'm gonna pull this back down and show you what it looks like when it's in the beginning. So it's quiet enough now to where you have the bass line is the main focus again, but this is loud enough to where it's a, a, a prominent effect. It's not something that's like all the way in the background like this. It's prominent but it's not taking the focus from the baseline. So that's the idea of balance front and back. You have, um, you have things that are closer, things that are farther, and it's not necessarily in the sense of what's louder, mathematically speaking, it's more in the sense of what seems louder when you think about it in the terms of what am I focusing on most? And now this is really easily observable in tracks with vocals because the focus of a track with vocals is always, not actually, you know what, rules are broken. So it's not always, but most of the time, the vocals are the focus. I will show you, actually, I have a pretty good example here um, where the vocals are not the focus and they're an, uh, an effect. So it's the track by Armin van Buren. And if I pull it up here, it's suddenly summer. And uh, the thing about this track is it starts out relatively um, relatively minimal. And then it goes to something that's really big. But when it's in the min minimal stage, it adds some vocals, except it adds them in the way that they're definitely not the focus. And I'll show you that right now. Oh, I skipped past it, oh well. There we go.
So you have these vocals here. And the weird thing is, they're like the only thing there. But for some reason, it feels like they're not the focus. And then it gets into the rest of the stuff. So now you might be thinking, well, the vocals are the focus because they're like the only thing there. No, actually, they're not. In this case, it's an interesting case where the kick drum was the focus. And um, you may not think about that because the kick drum is so simple. And that's one of the things that Armin van Buren and a lot of other EDM producers talk about. The kick drum is very central to your mix. So the fact that Armin here um, was taking the, uh, the kick drum and making it the focus and putting vocals in the background is very interesting. It kind of throws a spin on what you normally think would happen in a vocal track. So later on, the, uh, the vocals do come in with their full effect. And they take predominance over the kick drum. But in the beginning, like I said, the kick drum is actually the focus. Even though the only distinguishable, quote, instrument, unquote, is the vocals. Um, there's like, there's a light bass line in the background, but it's not all that big. The biggest thing in the sense of what do you focus on the most is the kick drum. So that's a very interesting thing to keep in mind. Um, but it tells you how much that the focus really makes a difference in how your end mix sounds. And that in turn means that you need to put a lot of time into balancing this front back placement. So that's, that's like the largest reason why uh, volume uh, is, the, is the most important tool you will run into with, um, with working in uh, pretty much any sort of mixing audio. So uh, just keep that in mind, and uh, when you work on your mixes, remember that it, it is about the music, but when it comes to the mix down, it's not about how many effects you could layer on, it's about how can you get the volume in the right place for everything. And um, when I go into EQ and compression, you'll notice that those are just um, tools derived from volume, and it's all about volume. The only thing that changes that is when you get into modulation and distortion. Uh, now, obviously, there are, there are a couple of other uh, things that are similar. Like for this exciter, for instance, it's, it's kind of like distortion, but it's kind of like volume also. Uh, it's closer to distortion, though. But anyway, the idea is a lot of these tools are based off of volume, and it sounds boring to go through with these some, like right now I only have 23 tracks and that's because this is barely past um, the the first verse, uh, this track. So by the time I'm done, I'm probably gonna have well over 60 tracks and getting the volume right for every single one of those may seem like a pain. Hate to tell you, it is. So uh, it it's, it's very tedious getting everything right. Um, it gets easier as you get better but it never gets to the point where you think you've got everything perfect and it was and it took you like 20 minutes. It's gonna take you hours to get the mix down right. So keep that in mind. If you're not spending hours trying to get the mix down right by, by like tweaking volumes and making sure everything's in balance, then you're focusing too much on effects most likely. I'm not talking about production. Production, you could focus a lot more on effects because the effects are what are creating your sound and um, giving you the instruments and tracks that you want. But uh, in the mix down stage, the most important thing to know is volume and, and getting your volume relationships right and figuring out where to place things. So uh, I might've gone over a li little bit over time here, but um, this is really important thing you need to keep in mind. And um, just uh, when you're working on your mixes, try to focus as much as you can on getting the volume right and then switch to EQ and compression and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, keep that in mind. And th that's pretty much it for this video. I did talk quite a bit about um, how this relates to production and, um, 
and how you know volume is not necessarily that important in production. And I will get into production later. Right now I'm focusing on mixing because um, I think mixing is, you need to know how to mix to get your production to sound right in the end. So I wanna focus on mixing to give a brief overview of mixing. So when you guys get into production and I start talking about production, then you could get your mix downs right uh, after you produce it and you don't have to worry about having these good productions with terrible mixing so much as uh, as if you would have um, just been focusing on learning how to produce. So I'll get into production later. That will be after this series. Actually, um, the way I have it laid out, just to give you guys a little bit of heads up, I have... Um, this is introducing mixing. Then the next one I'm gonna have is introducing music, and that's gonna be, uh, actually I don't remember if that's the exact name of it, but anyway, it's gonna be covering notes, chords, and stuff like that, and how you can make like a chord progression without having to listen to it a bajillion times to get it right. Like when I did, um, I did up here, and I was making that, how did I make that chord, and I didn't have to like listen to it 50 times to make it sound right, I only had to listen to it uh, pretty much once. I changed the note from here to here. So um, that's, but I already knew what the difference was. So that's music and uh, talking about a little bit of music theory. I'm not going to get into too much. I'm just going to talk about what's mostly important for uh, EDM. And uh, then after that, I'm going to get into production. And that series is not going to be a um, uh, pre planned length, it's going to continue indefinitely. And um, I'm going to, in that part, I'm going to talk about basics of production. I'm going to get into more advanced things in production. And from there, whenever I get questions, I'm going to um, start throwing my, uh, my answers to those questions um, in that series so that uh, it, it kind of just continues. Because when you get mixing is something that you, you learn the basics and you master it. Um, music theory is something that you learn the basics and then you, uh, you learn you know, what fits your style best. Production is something that is almost endless because there's a wide array of things you could do by uh, layering different things. Whereas mixing is mostly about getting everything balanced and right where you want it. Production is all about creating something new. And um, the idea of creating something new is uh, it's, it's something that just keeps on going. You keep that you have these artists that they keep on coming out with new music and that's because they're they're finding out more ways to be creative. So that's why that series is going to be continued for a while. But like I said, right now we're focusing on mixing and then we're going to get into a tiny bit of music theory so that you could start working on your productions and then I'm going to start talking about productions so that you could um, learn more about producing and then um, you'll be able to use the music theory you learned and the mixing skills you learned and apply it to your new productions so that they really get where you want them. So that's it for this video. And uh, I will quickly follow up with a video on, um, I believe it's either EQ or compression is next. I don't have my list right here with me, but um, one of those will be next. I'm not, I don't remember for sure. And, um, and uh, I'll probably get it out relatively soon after this. It's finals week, so uh, I've got college and it's a little bit of stress, but I've actually got a break from homework because it's finals week. So I have a little bit of extra time on my hands so I can make another video here. So sorry about uh, the couple of weeks that I left um, without a video, but uh, I'll try to start posting consistently over uh, winter break here and uh, get you guys with uh, as much stuff as I can. So that's it. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe, like, and comment. See ya.